All right, it's time to get this show on the road. Welcome everyone uh, to today's webinar. Alcor is a, clo a global cloud advisory and implementation services company serving Fortune 500, government agencies, and other leading organizations in multiple industry verticals across the Americas, Canada, and India. Alcor is also a ServiceNow Gold Services and Gold Sales Partner. We partner with leading technology companies, including AWS, FireEye, Microsoft, Okta, Encorda, and Big Panda. We advise leading businesses on cloud platforms, architecture, enterprise service management, and integrating IT service delivery. We also provide business process consulting to capture, re-engineer, and improve processes that can easily be automated to deliver real value. The Alcor Consulting Team has excellence in business strategy, cloud technology, and organizational change management. Our ongoing webinar series is designed to inform, enlighten, and start discussions within your own organizations. If you require any additional information after listening to today's webinar, please reach out to us through our website, www.alcortech.com. We have time reserved at the end of the webinar for Q&A, so please feel free to type any questions into the questions section of the webinar dashboard. Today's webinar topic is architectural review, provision and govern cloud resources using AWS Service Catalog Connector for ServiceNow, presented by Chaitanya Kishore, Clive D'Souza, and Masanya Scott. Chaitanya is a senior techno-functional business analyst and ServiceNow solution consultant from the Alcor India office. He is a ServiceNow certified implementation specialist and has completed over 20 complex ServiceNow implementations in, various, in the various areas of ITSM, PPM, and ITOM. Clive D'Souza leads the worldwide business development for AWS Service Catalog AWS Marketplace, and AWS Control Tower that enables organizations to accelerate migrations to the cloud. His team enables and assists customers on their migration journey to the cloud using AWS and third-party software. Clive has over 20 years of industry experience and an extensive background in software engineering, product management, sales enablement, and strategic planning. Early in his career, Clive held numerous technical roles, including systems engineer on flight control systems, software engineer, and solution architect. He earned an MS in computer systems engineering, an MBA in global leadership, and attended leadership training at MIT Sloan. Masanya Scott is a senior business development manager with AWS Service Catalog. Masanya enjoys helping AWS customers establish cloud operations frameworks, people, process, and tooling to accelerate cloud adoption. Masanya has over 20 years of experience in consulting, systems integration, IT operations, program management, business transformation, and account management. She has earned an M a, a BA in mathematics and an MBA in business management. It's now time to turn the webinar over to Chaitanya. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Jeff. So uh, before we start our uh, conversation, I would just like to outline the agenda for this particular webinar. So we will be talking a little bit about uh, Alcor and Alcor solutions, uh, the solutions that are provided by Alcor. Uh, we will then continue on to ServiceNow overview and understanding of have a, a basic snapshot of an understanding of the ServiceNow platform, uh, and then followed by uh, my colleagues uh, Clive and Masonia talking about AWS Service Catalog, and then the connector for ServiceNow, followed by demo and call to action. We will be reserving the end of the seminar for questions. So let's get started. So we are Alcor, as Jeff initially mentioned, we are uh, one of the top five ServiceNow partners in the Americas, uh, primarily in the United States of America and Canada. We are a ServiceNow Gold Services and Sales Partner with over 300 plus implementations uh, in various verticals. 
uh, with 500 plus implementations on with 300 plus clients. We, that includes our product competencies of security operations, customer service management, HR, GRC, uh, IT, operations management, business management, service management, software asset management, and vulnerability responses as well. So Alcor also boasts of teams of certified ServiceNow and AWS techno-functional and technical consultants who form the core of our organization uh, in pushing forward our boundaries. We also boast of about nine plus consistent customer satisfaction score in all our implementations. So our clients uh, are from varying sectors, from public sector and higher education, high tech, healthcare and wellness, financials and professional services and retail as well. Some of the named clients include Walmart, City of Berkeley, Toyota, Cisco, LinkedIn, et cetera. So we also boast of strategic partnership with leading cloud providers, primary, uh, primarily ServiceNow, AWS, Microsoft, FireEye, Splunk, as well as Nuvolo. So the mission at Alcor is delivering flexibility, scalability, and reliability with our Alcor AWS cloud solutions. Our set of products and our cloud offerings include cloud advisory, business applications, application integrations, cloud migrations, and managed services. With cloud advisory, we are, they are designed to assist our clients build and execute an AWS cloud strategy that is well aligned with the enterprise IT transformation plan. Our offerings of business applications of all sizes are uh, aimed at companies who are running their businesses, web applications in the cloud to simplify in infrastructure management, deploy projects uh, with the faster pace at lower cost and increase revenue. Our application integrations offerings allows you to integrate on-premises and cloud applications seamlessly to simplify and transform your organization's business processes and take advantage of the cloud capabilities. By linking various applications in your organization and creating modern architecture, you also gain the ability to automate business processes and support your digital transformation initiatives. Alcor solutions also provide cloud migrations, which will help you ensure a seamless and secure transition of your critical IT assets and workloads to the cloud. We also help you migrate your data and processes from your on-site data center to AWS cloud or even from another cloud to AWS as well. Our offerings are also topped off by managed services, which provides ongoing management of your AWS infrastructure so you can focus on your applications. By implementing best practices in all of these offerings, we help maintain your infrastructure AWS, uh, uh, in, in, through AWS or other cloud service providers and help you reduce uh, your operational overhead and risk. So now let's first understand uh, the ServiceNow platform from a bird's eye view. So ServiceNow is a cloud-based platform and suite of applications that facilitates organizations to manage various aspects of their IT infrastructure organizational processes and services. What you currently see on your screen is basically referred to as the ServiceNow wheel, uh, which is an offering of the ServiceNow architecture in a snapshot. So basically the outer three layers are the functional uh, verticals which represent the service management, business management and operation management, which, uh, which will allow you to work with multiple applications, including incident management, problem management, uh, of which belong to the service management umbrella, along with project resource and financial management applications and business management, and similar applications of discovery and service mapping on operations management. ServiceNow platform also provides you uh, various platform features, which includes building of your own application logic, its own security features, allowing multiple customizations with your application development, and working with configuration management database and analytics as well. So ServiceNow uh, is actually structured to work very well with the AWS as well. So what you see on your screen is basically a representation of ServiceNow's integration with AWS. So the functional layers of discovery, event management, service catalog, change management, and cost analytics are can be orchestrated and can work along with the cloud provider framework to be integrated with the AWS services as well. So ServiceNow and AWS actually are complementary to each other in terms of their ability to work with each other and allow 
and essentially ServiceNow helps you add the layer of business processing, the layer of functional specifications on top of the services provided by the AWS. Apart from the ServiceNow service catalog connector discussion that we are going to address today, there are other ServiceNow AWS integrations that are also that can also be performed and can be offered to you by Alcor as well. The primary of them, uh, one of them uh, is basically the cloud management application, which will allow you to integrate reporting, discovery, and provisioning. Other integrations include Amazon CloudWatch and incident management, uh, but it's, it's also possible for us to provide custom solutions, which will allow you to integrate ServiceNow with AWS. So before we get started with service AWS Service Catalog, it's important to give to understand very briefly about ServiceNow Service Catalog application as well. So the Service Catalog application within ServiceNow, the native application allows you for the creation of service catalogs that will provide the customers with self-service opportunities and the organization with process workflows to ensure reliable and efficient delivery of your requested services. So talking about uh, ServiceNow service catalog, it's basically the architecture will allow you to browse the existing catalog, which is configured for the end user, add to your cart and integrate that with any sort of process workflow engine, for example, approvals uh, and other functional specifications that you might have, which will govern your business processes in your organization to end in a fulfilled order. So ServiceNow service catalog is allow, allows you to kind of work with ServiceNow from the end user perspective, put in the requests from the self-service user perspective, and then receive the orders, receive the completed request after it follows through the business process, which is implemented by your organization. At this point in time, I would like to give the control back to Clive so that he can discuss further about AWS service catalog. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Chaitanya, uh, for setting up the preamble on this. So, hello, everyone. Um, as uh, uh, Chaitanya had introduced me earlier with his uh, MC, my name is Clive D'Souza. I lead the global service team uh, business development for three services, service catalog, control tower, and marketplace. And today, I want to set the stage and talk a little bit more uh, in lines with what we are seeing in the industry, how we can help large enterprise migrations uh, for you know progressive customers wanting to move to AWS and you know what our thoughts are in terms of where the entire industry is moving when it comes to enterprise migrations. So moving on to the very first slide after this, when you look at service catalog, primarily when we have been talking to hundreds and hundreds of CIOs and CTOs, what we have consistently heard as they begin the journey to the cloud is in the grand scheme of things, it literally is about three large personas. You have the organization, and towards the other end, you have the end users, and somewhere in between, you need to have a proper balance of security and speed. When you look at large organizations, the construct has always been that if you want to go deploy a software, and that can be an application, or it can be an infrastructure, or it can be a combination of both, the three things which keeps the CIO or the CTO, or for that matter, even the CEO uh, awake in the night, is is the software which they're defining and you know as part of the application portfolio compliant with the security needs of that particular industry, right? In in case of a financial services institution, things such as the SOC two or the SOC um, Sarbanes Oxley two uh, compliance needs to be comprehended. If it is in the healthcare space, it has to be something compliant to the HL seven and HIPAA and so on and so forth. The other question which always pop up from the CTO or the CISO is from a actual um, security compliance, and that could be simple things as the application which they want to deploy into the environment, has it been curated? Has it gone through the soak time of the security compliance policies? Something as simple as, you know, is the port 8080 open? Or should I even allow a particular application stack inside my entire overall, overall um, uh, deployment. And finally, the standardization. And this is the biggest nightmare for uh, scaling. And and then one of the challenges we have seen here is not all organizations will have you know multiple flavors of a same uh, operating system, or they will have a different version of an operating system uh, standardized as a gold image. And the best example we give is in the case of a really large organization, or in the case of a highly compliant organization, there is a very specific operating system version 
or there is a very specific application portfolio which they want to essentially brand as a gold image or with an Amazon bar lens, or Amazon machine image, or if it's a virtual machine image, and that's what they want to propagate. So that is what the security from a overall compliance strives for. Now, on the other hand, you have the developers, right? And the constant pushback from the developers always is, I want to go from the whiteboard where I'm designing, I'm architecting, I'm ideating a particular stack or I'm, I'm, I'm innovating and I want to go to the keyboard in minutes. Uh, I don't want to be in the business of logging onto a service now portal, for instance, and putting in a request for a LAMP stack. And then the server eventually shows up through the IT procurement process and what have you with the right set of software eventually under my desk in six months. And we've actually seen that happen, right? So they care for agility. They want to be able to do this quickly. They want to be able to go on to something directly onto the console. They want to do cell service. And it could be as simple as, I want to log in and I want to get the right image which my company has approved. And as a developer, as an architect, or as the end user of the actual software, I want to innovate. I don't want to decide which policy to get. I don't want to worry about deploying the wrong instance type or I don't want to worry about deploying the wrong um, version of a software. I just want that to be set for me from a policy. And by the way, I want to do this really quick and I want to get to the time to the market really, really fast. So if you move to the next slide here, in the grand scheme of things, this is what customers really care about, right? They want to essentially go down, they want to go and discover within either the hybrid model or in their existing application estate, everything they have. And they can do this in a, as a combination of, you know, you dredge the entire system, you have a migration services uh, come in and, and, and you pick up the entire state, right? And that's your migration phase. And we have a whole bunch of AWS services which cater to that specific need. And as they decide and define which particular applications, both uh, software as well as the infrastructure they want to migrate, they want to then go and create a mechanism to go and publish it, something which is curated, something which has been vetted, and then that whole construct is where service catalog comes in. Along the way, you know, they can choose to either do the BYOL, where they have an existing relationship and they just go and get the license and then get the actual product from marketplace or to be third party. And then if you are part of their, you know, uh, if they implement, most large organizations to actually implement a, uh, a DevOps or a CI CD pipeline. So something like Jenkins or Chef, Puppet, Juju, Octopus, what have you, right? Uh, you integrate that. And then as a combination of multiple AWS services, we can use them to publish it. And then the governance comes in. And this is where Service Catalog will come in and Masonia, uh, who works with me, she'll go deeper into what we can do there. And eventually it goes down the path of an operating. So at a nutshell, this is where most of the large organizations want to really gravitate towards, right? You know, they want to move the existing application estate from the legacy on-prem or, or whatever uh, uh, model is and then they want to modernize and manage it, right? And then if you move to the next slide here, at the end of the day, what Service Catalog really does, it is it enables their you know, large enterprises to deploy AWS services rather quickly, at the same time, following the best practices of the industry, right? Now, as we go deeper into this presentation, I'm gonna turn it over to Masane, who's gonna go deeper and double click on the deployments here. Thank you, Clive. My pleasure. All right, so a few key terms to note. Um, Titania gave you an overview of service now service catalog. So AWS service catalog is basically a proxy and, and a, a governance mechanism for um, our AWS cloud uh, formation. And what we do is we provision um, resources as well as accounts uh, in a consistent delivery fashion. So a few terms to note, we call our, um, our the resources and the packages that you want to provision um, onto a AWS products. And that's similar to a, a ServiceNow service catalog item. And then we bundle those products in what we call portfolios similar to ServiceNow's category. And within that portfolio, those products have, uh, depending on the admin's uh, preference uh, to ensure security and governance, has constraints 
uh, that help define how those products are provisioned and who can provision those products. The product list is then made available to the end users who then once they've uh, requested those products, um, then has access to the provision products that they have uh, created. Common use cases, I will hold off on talking about the ITSM tools, but uh, let's go with the other four common use cases for enabling self-service. Uh, developers and end users is one of our most common use cases where um, developers, similar to what Clive just said, they, they not only do they want the, the building blocks, but they want those blocks prefabbed so that they can focus on innovation. So how can we wrap up quickly um, developers' time to, to market for the solutions that they're trying to innovate on, whether it's in dev, uh, staging, or in a prod environment? From a, uh, another feedback we've heard from customers on um, the need for a service catalog and provisioning consistent delivery um, uh, fashion is data scientists. Whether they're spinning up uh, EMR clusters um, and data scientists just needing the resources so that they can do their job as opposed to having to learn everything about uh, how to assemble all the different port parts that they would need uh, uh, to configure. So as we're moving to more of an automated infrastructure as code um, and leveraging CloudFormation templates, uh, this is what we enable. From an operations perspective, uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback that provisioning is just one step of the life cycle of, of a service or a workload. So how can we do certain operational actions once things are provisioned? So uh, we, we 90% of our, over 90% of what uh, services and features we have in our services is based on what customers feel are important to them. And so we, we, we listen to our customers as a customer obsessed organization. And we've added in uh, recently in the past year or so more operational features such as self-service actions that uh, connects us to other uh, AWS services such as Systems Manager that gives engineers uh, and developers the option to start, stop, reboot, or do some type of run command function on their particular products. And now through connectors that we're building, because we're hearing from our customers, you know, we already have a service catalog, we have some type of, uh, of um, list of products uh, method that we do uh, through service requests. Um, how can we consider it kind of like a federated approach to um, providing all the, the goodness that you do in terms of your governance from your service catalog, and how can we make those products viewable in our ITSM tooling? So uh, with uh, change management and uh, after things are provisioned, we're now enabling end users with our connectors, and particularly the ServiceNow connector, the ability that once something's updated from a provision product, um, terminated, or even um, a self-service action is commanded on that particular product, then we put in an automatic change close record to kind of uh, keep that, that life cycle um, in check. And then also onboarding. So since we're a proxy to CloudFormation, any AWS service that uses CloudFormation, um, uh, such as um, Amazon Workspaces or any other end user type of uh, experience, we're giving end users um, and customers the ability to leverage provisioning uh, with the certain parameters and the guardrails that they put into their infrastructure as code um, and make that happen. So the feedback, like I stated, um, uh, when we listen to our customers base, base ask us what's important to them, especially from a cloud operations um, perspective, we, we've, we've heard it over the past few years since I've been with AWS that, you know, uh, the great tool, but how can we create a streamlined provisioning situation in, based on the tools that we use today? And for example, of course, uh, we have, um, we have uh, many co joint customers with ServiceNow, so they wanted to leverage ServiceNow's global service catalog and provision AWS products. So we created this AWS service catalog connector uh, for ServiceNow in which Products, uh, AWS Service Catalog serves to, as the source of truth for those products, but we ingest those products uh, that, that are uh, ad administered uh, to be exposed to ServiceNow. And through that ingestion, we basically give ServiceNow end users the ability to browse products 
for AWS resources in the same place that they want to order a mobile phone or onboard a new employee or make a facility service request. And so uh, we curate those particular products, expose them into uh, ServiceNow service catalog. And then once the order is submitted, the scope app um, that the connect connector was built on um, has a pre-approved workflow. So the RITM is automatically pre-approved and then it's provisioned. We do have blogs and I, I have a link to it on how to add additional approval workflows and in order to do that provisioning based on certain use cases. The benefits of having this connector is that streamlined um, uh, provisioning, um, kind of federating, similar to how a federated CMDB has multiple asset or, or configuration item repositories feeding into ServiceNow CMDB. Now we're going to do that same kind of concept with the service catalog, accelerating AWS adoption. So the developers can focus on innovating and that agility and speed while we're giving them what's compliant and true um, and as they um, at, in, in enabling agile governance. From a cost controls perspective, we only allow the end users and developers um, access to products as well as resources and resource types that the administrator feels is cost effective. And then um, we limit the access. So the actual service now end user doesn't have a direct permission to the AWS console. They assume a role that only has access to AWS service catalog. And then we put constraints uh, by making AWS Service Catalog the source of truth. We put constraints and put the resource resources uh, permissions and a resource constraint so that the end user in ServiceNow never has that direct access to not only um, to the products they have, they can only um, order what they're allowed to order. And we're supporting this connector on uh, the recent um, 1.6.7 version on London, Kingston, and Jakarta. And we have plans to continue supporting as um, ServiceNow uh, releases uh, their next two releases this year. So um, from a configuration detail perspective, an end user would go to a new catalog category in ServiceNow called AWS Service Catalog um, Products. And then they'll browse that for what they um, what resource they want. They'll input the necessary parameters and then um, request it. Once that request is provisioned and is provisioned successfully, then the end user will see the outputs of that request. And then also in the AWS environment, those resources will provision. OK, um, the scoped app, um, kind of like if you're looking at the middle section of this diagram here, basically sets up the the permissions to the accounts um the portfolios and the regions where the administrator wants to gather the um aws service catalog products from and then the synchronization process that's a part of the scope that then uh, uh ingests those different products and makes any updates as any updates are made uh, within aws service catalog the uh Connector is also based on the calls to AWS Service Catalog or based on our public APIs. Um, and then the portfolio structures that are set up from there. So recently, we initially launched this connector in May of last year. And um, from an iterative perspective, we've listened to feedback from various customers in various industries, and we've released two additional uh, releases um, at, in the fall of last year. So we now support the ServiceNow portal view, uh, which is very important to our customers who want uh, their customers to order from that. And I'll actually start a demo from that view. Uh, we do update actions and also self-service actions. Um, and that gives the ability, and, and then we improved our um, API uh, optimization for the syn synchronization process. So in the demo, let me set up the scenario for you, okay? We're going to look at what we call cloud operational domains and um, address the service catalog, look at request fulfillment, go in and provision uh, resources based on certain parameters in the product that I'm going to select. And then I want to show you what 
Uh, we've created, we've added a new class through the scope app into the CMDB. So I want to show you what we put details in there and then show you once something's provisioned and considered in a provision state, what operational actions can be done and then how we uh, connect those operational actions and keep track from an auditing purpose uh, to change management. Okay, so without further ado, let's go into, um, I'm going to expand the screen just a little bit more. So for those of you who know, even though this is, uh, you have our, have our AWS Search Catalog logo, this is a kind of out of the box service now self-service portal. Okay, so what I'm going to do, you also will see a widget on the lower left hand corner that is available to add to that portal um, design that will show the AWS products. All right, and I'll come back to that widget in a second. But let's go order something. Okay, so recent popular items, I'm going to order the web server, but I just want to go in this view and show you that this new category called AWS Service Catalog. Now, Able Tutor, and most of you know that's a common um, demo uh, resource. He only has access to um, two two of my uh, products in um, the uh, the AWS Service Catalog. Okay, so I want to provision this product called Web Server. All right, so a single form comes up. Um, I added the price same way you would add or update any price in service now. So that's not a that's not a pull from anything. I just manually added that price to the catalog item and it cascades anytime this is provisioned. So I'm going to give it a product name. Let's say 131 live now. OK, um, the role has already been accepted. The launch options and launch options are the constraints and the resources that allow this product to be provisioned. And then I've got different product versions. So I'm going to choose LAMP Stack 3. OK, if I moved over to the ServiceNow, I mean the AWS Service Catalog, this same LAMP Stack product, if I go into the web server, the same versions, I'm in the administrative view, and then I show the this is the infrastructure as code as I was talking about that shows what needs to be a part of this product in order for it to provision. So what we expose from an end user experience is we only show the parameters. Once you select a product, we show the parameters. So the instance type is what type of web server uh, for EC2 do you want? So we're going to be conservative and let's just try T2 small. I'm going to put in some other parameters that are required in order for this to provision in my um, demo environment. And then we have tag options. And I consider tag options standardized tags. And that's the metadata that goes with this particular product. So anytime I provision this, I'm going to get a cost center and a launched in um, value um, that I can say. And then I'm going to also add one that says provision by. And then I, I just like to put as a statement myself. And not only do you have the ability to uh, also ingest tag options, your standardized tags, you can also add tags to this. Now, I can either add this to the card or since I only have one item, let's click order now. OK, and then check out and it's going to go through that ordering process. OK. And so then. When I click on home, I'll see that it's doing a provisioning um, status. OK, now I'm going to come out of the uh, self-service portal. And go into uh, the ServiceNow standard user interface. And I'm actually going to go click on my assets. And as you can see, there's the live now. Alcor exists. OK. I also want to show that I'm, I've already done uh, a pre webinar instance that I created. This one also exists. So while that re those resources are spinning up, we're going to just take a quick look at this one here and uh, this particular web server provisioned. It gave me um, and what I'm in right now is the 
CMDB. I'm looking at a, a class called AWS Service Catalog Product. And the CI under that is this uh, pre-web webinar instance. And what we've created in CMDB is we added two subforms to each product that's being provisioned. And we do a thing called product events, which show the actions that have happened on that particular product. So this one shows that I've provisioned something, it's su submitted and exceeded, and it succeeded. Then we also put the outputs of that product. So in the infrastructure as code cloud formation template, um, this, this particular product, um, LampStack, asks for you to, to retrieve the DNS name. And so then we put those values in there. Now, from an operational standpoint, instead of that developer going to the cloud tiger team or CCOE or the administration team and saying, hey, I need to do an update. Can you guys update it for me? We're enabling and empowering the developer to do certain actions on that particular provisioned product based on the parameters that have already been um, approved for that particular product. So if I request an update here, the only thing that the end user sees is they can change the version of it, or if they want to use the same version, it'll expose, here go the parameters you put in. Now, if I say, okay, well, why don't I make it a T2 large? Because I need a little bit more capacity for, for the experiment I'm choosing. So if I click update, what you'll see are a couple of things. One, you'll see a new updated provision product event, and it'll say that it's in progress, okay? And then if I came over to AWS, and I go to services real quick. I also show you that that particular product, you'll see it's stopping because it's gonna it's gonna stop as the T2 small and it's going to restart as a T2 uh, large. Okay, so that's what's happening with this. But the other thing I wanted to show you is notice that there's now a change request. Okay, so that change request will then show. Here's this detail. It's a closed, pre-approved, closed change request for document purposes. We're going to tell it that we performed a certain action, and we said we, met, we did an update, and we closed it and associated that to that particular change. So then it's related into that new class that we have as well, okay? And so if I do a refresh again, It stopped. It's you see that it's gone from T2 small. Now it's initializing and it's running. It's updating it to a T2 large. Okay. So now, if I go back to my assets and I look at the one that we just provisioned. So the live one, Alcor now, you'll see that it's in a state of provision. And once it's in a state of provision, be their standard user interface or the self-service portal, then for this particular one that I just did in this uh, live setting, you can now have access to do self-service actions, termination, or update on it. So after this provision, then it'll expose and make it available. And if I go to the service portal, view I'll still get that same end user experience but in more of a, a UX uh, perspective of requesting an update requesting the self-service action or requesting termination if I request termination this will terminate and then it will um, also create a change request for this particular record as well so basically what I've shown in this demo is uh, we, we walked through, you, you saw that the end user, Able Tutor, never, he doesn't even have an ac access, a role in AWS console. He assumes a role that's based to the uh, connector scoped app. Um, uh, I filled in my parameters, filled in my, chose which product version, um, because in AWS Service Catalog, you can version uh, the products and have different flavors of it. Um, 
the, we, we did the request since it was on an automatic approval. It, it started provisioning those resources. I've shown you what was in the CMDB and the fact that we had two additional um, subforms, uh, one for product events and then outputs of that particular resource. And then we performed an update that ultimately created an automatic change request. And so as things, this enables transparency. So if, if an organization ever gets audited, they can have what, you know, here go my pre-approved products that are based on my, my service catalog. And here go the actions that happen uh, after, after those products are provisioned um, and, and provides that transparency from there. So that's all we have for the demo. One of our call to actions is that uh, we love customer feedback. We're we're um, we're we're building awareness for this connector uh, across our different customers, and we're thank we're so grateful that um, Alcor invited us to give give an uh, architectural review of this product. And what we'd like to do is open up to our customers the opportunity to sign up for an immersion day. And what immersion day is is basically it gives you the ability to get um, for us to work with you on establishing this connector. Uh, bringing in Alcor to also get that feedback to see how you need to take it further within the ServiceNow perspective, uh, leveraging partners um, such as Alcor for that. And then we give an overview, deep dive into AWS Service Catalog, how to set up things on the AWS side, how to configure the ServiceNow side, and how to do the validation between the two. And then also have listen to feedback just based on once you after you set up this. Um, uh, proof of concept, then what additional feedback do you have for this this uh, connector uh, so that we can always iterate and improve it. So send an email to aws-snow-sc at amazon.com, input the certain specific title and place your, your organization's name at the end, and then in the body of the email, um, add those following, um, especially that main code, Alcor-Web, then one of our BDs will get in contact with you and let you know how, how we can schedule the immersion day and, um, and identify what are your common use cases so that we can make it useful to you. The connector is available in the ServiceNow store today. It's a free scoped app, so you just download it from there. There's a blog that I've written on how to set up and install the connector that also has um, um, a YAML file that will help speed up the AWS configuration side of it as well. And then we also have a blog on how to uh, do the approval workflow. So with that said, um, uh, that's all for the presentation that we have, and we'd like to now go to questions. Excellent. Well, thanks very much, uh, Masanya, and of course to uh, Clive and CK as well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you guys must have done a fantastic job. Uh, presenting this information because there's only uh, about three questions so far. So um, if anyone uh, does have a question, um, please uh, type the question into the question section of the dashboard. Uh, so let's get going here. So the first one is, uh, what are the latest integration capabilities of the connector for ServiceNow? Not sure who should answer that one. What are the latest uh, integration capabilities of the connector for ServiceNow? Yes, this is Masanya, so I'll answer that. So the latest uh, capabilities are we've enabled self-service actions. So um, if an if a company had uses AWS Systems Manager to do um, command-like documents uh, such as start, stop, reboot, and EC2, or have even created a custom document. They can associate those actions to an AWS Service Catalog product. The AWS Connector will then um, ingest those related actions. And once that product is provisioned, then say, for instance, um, uh, Jane Doe, the developer, uh, provisions a web server um, and, and wants to turn it off at a certain given time, then if an a associated action is, is um, related to that product, then Jane Doe can go into ServiceNow and just request um, um, a self-service action, stop that particular server, and, and, it, and it will um, record a change request. The other thing is we also uh, did an update 
Uh, so existing parameters have the ability to update, and then we added the self-service portal view. We do have the ability, we're getting, uh, we, we started to look at some uh, more administrative functions and um, the ability to delete a uh, service catalog product, an AWS service catalog product in ServiceNow, and then that deletion cascades to AWS service catalog. Um, but the caveat in this current release is that there can't be any um, self-service actions associated to it. So uh, we've started the deletion of a, of, of a product without self-service actions associated. So those are the latest features. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Mazanya. Um, okay. We're starting to get a couple more questions here too. So that's great. Um, what are the advantages of using ServiceNow? as a platform for AWS Service Catalog? The biggest advantage is streamlined provisioning. So instead, if, if a developer or end user uses ServiceNow Service Catalog to order other IT services, then minimizing that swivel chair experience, similar to, um, for those of you who use incident management, you know how like you may have a vendor, a telecom vendor that does your help desk support. And then there are also incidents that you have in your own help desk. And so they'll do that e-bonding situation where the the tickets from the, the telecom vendor directly come into your own organization's incident records uh, for visibility. And so what this does is streamline provisioning so that that, that, that end user develop developer doesn't have to swivel chair amongst multiple tools in order to get things achieved. And it also kind of uh, gives a streamline so that 80% of we're, we're looking at common um, cloud teams or cloud engineering teams and uh, the patterns of almost 80% of the requests are similar. So instead of having those patterns be a manual um, submitting of some type of request or an email, then you can automate this and then uh, have that streamlined provisioning experience. Okay, fantastic. Um, uh, let's see uh, here. Can oh. I add something? On top of what Masanya already mentioned, it's also possible for us to integrate AWS with ServiceNow uh, and uh, kind of you know leverage the capability of ServiceNow and its configuration management database to see uh, the AWS instances, to see those uh, provisioned uh, specifications in action as a managed services offering, essentially. So that's also one of the things that we can really do, and and essentially leveraging the governance capabilities of ServiceNow uh, on top of the infrastructure of services that are offered by AWS. Good point. Thanks, CK. Um, uh, do you, must you use, do you have to have, I'm trying to paraphrase here, um, do you have to have orchestration to integrate ServiceNow with AWS? Uh, the answer to that is no. The scope app does not use orchestration. Um, we use the AWS uh, public APIs for service catalog. Um, and the, the provision is done through CloudFormation, which is our infrastructure as code or considered orchestration um, uh, mechanism. So a CloudFormation stack does the provision. Okay. So you do not need um, uh, uh, orchestration. Okay. Um, and then this is kind of related here. Um, I missed part of the demo. So this may have been covered. Is a mid-server required for this integration? No, a mid server is not required. Okay. We do uh, the synchronization is done through scheduled jobs as opposed to uh, a, a mid server. So the scheduled jobs out of the box is every 31 minutes to go out and see what the products, uh, any new products um, or deleted, uh, removing those products. Um, but you can take that down to seconds. Okay, excellent. Um, my question is to the AWS team. Is there a way to automate, uh, automate automation of cloud formation template from ServiceNow? Uh, 
No, the cloud formation template, since AWS Service Catalog is a source of truth, the cloud formation template must be created in AWS, and then we ingest it into ServiceNow. So there is no, we're not doing a designer in ServiceNow to send back to, we're not doing that. We're, we're staying the source of truth to provide the governance from the AWS resources and, and exposing those to um, ServiceNow. Okay. Cool. Um, what is the time frame for implementing the AWS catalog to ServiceNow for provisioning and grow from there? So the initial proof of concept setup can happen in less than a couple of hours uh, with all of the, uh, the latest uh, AWS configuration um, set up in an automated fashion and then the scope app just updating, installing that. Um, it depends on the customer's governance of moving that from a POC to a dev environment, then ultimately production. Depending on that typical time frame, it could be weeks or months, depending, and it really depends on the customer's um, um, exploration from there, and if they have any additional requirements from a ServiceNow perspective. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um... Uh, we're getting a request for additional webinars. So will there be a separate webinar to cover AWS management, leveraging ServiceNow, Service Desk, event, incident, and problem? We can take that feedback back. Um, I will tell you that there is a, if you send me an email to M-A-S-O-N-Y, or AWS-Snow-SC, and ask that question, I can send you a blog that shows there is a, another scoped app called SNS scoped app that does through Amazon CloudWatch. Um, uh, based on the CloudWatch alarms you sit, submit, create an SNS topic. That SNS topic goes to a ServiceNow incident handler through that scoped app, and that incident handler will create incidents. So I can send you that blog on that that um, supplements or complements the connector that uh, we discussed today. Okay, cool. So um, I'll also save the uh, uh, the questions uh, dashboard, uh, Masanya, so we'll know who's asked that question, and we can just send them that information. Um, so uh, is if there is no mid-server integration, who do the CMDBs, how do the stay, how do the CMDBs stay in sync? Is it push or pull? So the only thing we put into the CMDB is the provision product ID details of the, um, the resource. And any, if you do a get function for outputs, those details are put in there. So as things are provisioning, um, we only put in the, the service catalog provisioning product ID. How it stays in sync is um, there's a, a sync product that will keep it in sync, but then it's it runs on an interim. Um, we don't put the end results cloud resources in that. That's more of an AWS config. Uh, scenario, and if that person wants to talk about that anymore, um, they can uh, send a, a question, and, and we can take that offline. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and the final question so far is, um, will a recording be available? So I can answer that, yes. Uh, recording will be available on the Alcor website. Um, will the presentation be shared? Um, is that something, uh, Masanya and CK and Clive, you will, are you willing to share the presentation? To my understanding, yes. Okay, awesome. So um, we'll have that information um, available through that um, through our dashboard. So we'll send that uh, to the gentleman that's asking that question. And if anyone else uh, would like a copy of the presentation, uh, you can let us know through um, contacting us through uh, our website. So that looks like that is it. So uh, the recording, uh, as I did mention, it, it will be available uh, on the Alcor website, www.alcortech.com. Uh, we'll also send everyone a link to the recording uh, via email. So thanks everyone for joining. Excellent presentation, uh, CK and Clive and uh, Masanya. Thanks very much. Thank 
you everyone for your time and we will uh, see you at the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone.